This Photoshop video tutorial is about the high pass and low pass method of cloning. We covered many different topics in our extended cloning video tutorial available on our website www.theartofretouching.com. However, I would like to give you this cloning method free of charge just so you know what type of detailed training that video contains in it. Oddly enough, that video is over an hour and 40 minutes long and this entire video that you are watching right now isn't even covered in it. That cloning video is completely new, unreleased material. So if you are interested in learning everything about cloning in one shot, then that would definitely be the video to watch. In general, I think that going through the extreme of making a high pass and low pass layer is overkill because when time is money, it's more important to get through the retouching as quickly as possible. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm obviously just going to show you how to use the high pass and low pass layer as a way of making cloning corrections. In order to use this, it's best if you do this on the front end, meaning you plan on using a high pass and low pass layer before you get into any extra color corrections. In this case, I have all these extra layers and what I needed to do was merge all the channels from this woman layer into a single layer of a high pass and low pass. And that's bad because now I can't go backwards and make any changes to any of these layers underneath. Ideally, I should have just done this on the front end, but because this is a tutorial, it wasn't something I was directly thinking about. What I'm going to show you is that I'm putting a high pass and a low pass layer, which are currently the exact same thing from a merged uh, group of layers under this woman group. So what I'm going to do is hide this high pass layer just to show you the change that I make on the low pass layer. In order for this to actually work properly, what we can't have is this layer mask on here. Like I said, these are identical, but if I actually leave that mask on, it does something funky that I don't like. So I'm just going to delete that, and then I'm going to make the adjustment to the whole layer by itself without any mask on it. I'm going to go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now I pick 20. It's a completely arbitrary number. It could be 30. It could be 15. It doesn't really matter. The point is that it's blurring out all the detail. All we want is the general shape left behind. So in this case, I use 20, and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to put that mask back on there. So I'm going to hold down my Option key, click on the mask for the layer above it and then I'm going to apply that mask. I'm going to turn that high pass layer back on, and then I'm going to go up under Image, Apply Image. Instead of this merged layer, I'm going to change it to Low, which this is a listing of all the different layers that I currently have active, so I want to use the Low layer. The channel is RGB. Now in this case, I'm in an 8-bit image, but I want to show you that a 16-bit image, which you should be actually working on, would be add with a scale of 2 and an offset of 0, and then turn on your invert. Now, you can't change these settings at all. This has to be very specific. If you're in a 16-bit image, these are the settings you want to use. And if you're in an 8-bit image, is subtract. You do not want to invert it. You still want the scale to be 2, but then you want your offset to be 128. This gives you the exact same shift, but with different values, and the difference is 8-bit versus 16-bit. And then in both cases, you want to change the layer to be linear light. Now, as you notice, it turns it back to the way that it was. The difference is the high pass is working only on texture, whereas low pass is only working on value. So by turning on this high pass layer, I'm going to zoom in, and you can see that there's some funky outline around the outside. This is completely a masking issue.
So in this case, I want to look at her nose, which has freckles on it. I'm going to be using the healing brush, which allows me to use a particular point in her face. And I'm going to change the hardness to 20%. I'm going to change the angle to one direction or the other. And then I'm going to change the roundness to make an oval brush. The reason for doing this is that it's going to help me avoid making repetitious patterns. So I'm going to focus on her nose and her general cheeks because they have freckles on them. Go back to the actual layer. So then I'm going to click a point and then I'm going to start cloning. Now the thing to notice is that I'm not really cloning the color. I'm only cloning the actual texture itself. And the reason for this is because I broke apart the high pass and low pass. The high pass is going to be the texture. The low pass is going to be the color and tint. Since you are still watching this video on cloning, it is obvious to me that you are serious about becoming a better retoucher. I don't know if you've had a chance to go to the website yet and look into that extended cloning video, but I don't want cost to be the reason that you're not doing it. So I would like to offer you a coupon code, HIPASS10, all capital letters, H-I-P-A-S-S-10, that will give you $10 off. That is my gift to you for taking the time to watch this high pass and low pass video tutorial. Now the biggest difference is going to be on an area like her neck. Then I can zoom out, and then you can see how I've removed that crease in her neck, as well as extra freckles on her nose and her face. But now the thing is, I've only made this adjustment on the texture layer, not on the color layer. As you can see, the low pass, which is the blurred variant of the image, has remained the same. And all I've done is remove the added textures in her face. And the intent of this is if you're doing a beauty or a glamour shot, then you can go in here and you, you can smooth out all the pores in her face or other hairs or blemishes or whatever in a single pass and not affect the base color underneath. Now I can't say that I'm a huge fan of this, but it certainly works. And if I am going to use it, it's going to be on the very beginning before I've had a chance to add all the extra layers onto an image. And just to quickly show you, with a single pass, all of her crow's feet are gone. Please make sure to sign up at www.theartofretouching.com for the, our free membership, which will allow you to watch more video tutorials that will make you a better retoucher.